stop the Lord Almighty? Can you help me say, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Come on, no one can stop our Savior. No one can stop our Lord. Who can stop? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Say, who can stop the Lord? Listen, I don't know about you, but I serve a beautiful Savior who reigns on the throne in the beauty of holiness. We cry out holy with the angels tonight. You're so beautiful, God. Hallelujah. I saw the Lord seated on his throne and the train of his robe. Fills this temple And day and night The angels proclaim And they say holy, holy Is the Lord God Almighty Who was in his hands Say be it so, be it so Lord, say King of heaven, be glorified, say all creation, yes Lord, they testify. I said, everybody clap those hands. I said, everybody clap, everybody clap, everybody clap those hands. Yeah. Yes, Lord. The elders cast down their crowns. The angels bow down. Hey. And as it is in heaven. And 
they say holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was in his Say be exalted, be exalted, be lifted high. Yes, Lord, say King of heaven, you must be glorified until all Testifies, testifies that you're Jehovah. 
Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. God bless you. Thank God for all of you that have joined us tonight and those that are still coming into the room. We praise Hello, God Pastor. for all of you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Melissa, did you call me? Okay, apparently, I don't know what Melissa is doing, but that's fine. All right. God bless all of you. Welcome tonight uh, to our time of study together. I'm grateful for each and every one of you and for your presence on tonight. Pray that you've had a, a fulfilling and wonderful day uh, thus far today. Um, as you could see, those that came in early, um, and we'll show it before we leave once again, um, our slide presentation of the tank removal um, that has begun um, across the street from the church. Uh, so uh, we'll give you a chance to see that. I'm looking at some of the comments and somebody was laughing. I guess Melissa added uh, Bernie Sanders in there or something because they say Uncle Bernie is even on the demolition site. <laughs> uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, that's a good thing. So I'm once again thankful for all of you uh, and for your presence tonight. If you're on social media, I see that many are already on, um, on Facebook Live and those that are on YouTube and the website, please share. Please invite others to be a part of our time of study tonight, our time of study tonight. Let us pray. God, we honor you. God, we bless you. And God, we thank you. Thank you for your hand of love and mercy and compassion that's been on us all day long. And to be quite honest, your hand has been on us all week long. And so, God, it is because of your hand uh, that we are here tonight. Your hand not only woke us up this morning, but your hand also has guided us throughout this week and throughout this day. Thank you for assembling us together virtually tonight so that we might encounter your word and encounter you and that we might study your word together. Now, bless us in our time together tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So thank God for all of you tonight. Hey, we, we're continuing our journey tonight. We are back in the 17th chapter of John, uh, verses 20 through 26, the 17th chapter of John, uh, verses 20 through 26. Hey, if, if, if you don't know Zoom by now, uh, Dr. Catherine Myers, our, uh, our minister to women, has been leading and will be leading uh, Zoom 101 to teach you all the functions of Zoom, uh, the muting yourself. Uh, the raising your hand, not like this, but the raising your hand with the icon, the use of the chat section, all of those things. And she's given of herself to teach us all of that because this is our new new world. And this is not going anywhere. Uh, even when church comes back, 
and people start coming back to church. This is not going anywhere, sisters and brothers. This will uh, be a form of, of gathering, maybe a form of meetings. It's going to be a form of a whole lot of stuff. So this is not going anywhere. So you might as well get used to it. Uh, uh, this will re last the rest of my life and, and, and many of you all's lifetime. Uh, so please uh, get used to it. Um, as you know, we're continuing the series of the importance of prayer. Dr. Bryant got us all uh, got us started in the right direction with that. Um, and every month, I'm focusing on a general theme. This this month, of course, is prayer. Uh, next month, which begins next Wednesday, uh, we'll be dealing with mental health. Mental health. And Dr. Tamer Bryant from California will kick us off. Uh, that is the daughter of Dr. Cecilia Bryant. I've encouraged you to Google Dr. Tamer Bryant for yourself uh, so that you have idea who will be with us next week for an hour. And hopefully you invite hundreds of people uh, to get delivered mentally next week and, and to start uh, in that direction. There's a flyer of Dr. Tamer Bryant. And um, we're excited about that. I'm looking forward to it myself. I am looking forward to it. Um, uh, texting her today. So I'm excited about that. Um, and then the rest of the month, we will be dealing with mental health the rest of the month of February. And then likewise in March, we'll deal with uh, uh, stocks and bonds and finances and uh, taxes and all of that. Uh, the first week in March, we have guests for that. And then I'll teach the rest of that month on money. Uh, yeah, on money. Uh, and then we'll continue. We'll have themes each and every month. So let's go to work tonight. Uh, John chapter 17, verse 20 through 26. Listen, I'm going to get to a section tonight and, I, um, and I'm going to encourage two or three of you. Uh, of course, we have to use our time wisely so I can't open it up to everybody. We all have different teaching styles. Reverend Clark teaches differently. Uh, Dr. Catherine teaches differently. I teach differently. And that's good and an indication that we don't have any clones on the ministerial staff. They all have their uniqueness and we embrace their uniqueness. And so uh, I, I will be asking for two or three of you to come and share something in two different sections of the study on tonight. And so you have to use the chat section or you have to use the raise the hand icon section so that we can acknowledge you, I can acknowledge you and then have uh, Melissa or whoever is the team tonight uh, to bring you on. But when we get there, you, you'll know that we are there. All right, let's start tonight in uh, John chapter 17, verse number 20, I'm reading. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. That's it. That's it. Uh, let's think about this tonight. Uh, what do we see here? Jesus prays that believers will believe in him. Jesus prays that believers will believe in him. Now, you remember last week, uh, Jesus prayed for his disciples specifically those that would be carrying on the gospel. He prayed for his disciples. This week, he's praying for believers. He's praying for believers. He's praying for all of us. And his prayer for us, sisters and brothers, is that we uh, might believe in him. Hear me tonight, not in the church, but in him. There's a difference between Jesus and the church. And oftentimes, People get ran out of the church and people run away from the church because they put their belief in the church and not in the owner of the church, the originator of the church, Jesus Christ himself. So I want to be clear. He's praying that you will believe in him. Now, similar to his prayer last week for the disciples, Jesus prays and talks about unity. That's, that's his theme song, unity. He talks about unity uh, and the people of God being one with God and one with the Son. Unity, being one with God and one with the Son. Now, I've shared um, on recent occasions and many times before 
uh, my affinity for church history. And, and one of the reasons in particular I have an affinity for church history is because church history helps me to navigate the present and it also helps me to put in context a lot of what the church is dealing with from a historical perspective. And so one of my favorite persons of church history uh, is Tertullian. You all, some of you all have heard that name, Tertullian. Now Tertullian is a North African theologian uh, who worked as a jurist in Rome until his return to Carthage. Now, when he returned to Carthage, he eventually became the leader of the African church. Tertullian is widely given credit for coining the term or the phrase Trinity. Trinity, God in three persons. Trinity, that is given to a black man from North Africa named Tertullian. And he coined the word Trinity, in essence, he coined it to help the church understand the relationship between God and Jesus Christ. That was really his purpose for coining the word Trinity. Um, now, of course, centuries later uh, and, and thousands of years later, uh, we see Trinity in a different form, God in three persons. But when Tertullian presented it, it was about the relationship that was shared between the father and the son and his stress. Uh, he was stressing the importance of them being one, them being one. So when Jesus is praying tonight that believers will believe in him, he's also saying, as you see in the text, that they will believe that you, daddy, sent me, that you, father, sent me. Um, so, so Tertullian was really trying to help the church with that, as well as he was also trying to help the church understand the New Testament teachings about God the New Testament teachings about God. For Tertullian, the oneness of God, sisters and brothers, the oneness of God in Jesus was very critical for him. In Jesus' prayer tonight and last night for the disciples and tonight for the believers, we are able to see the importance of their unity, the importance of their togetherness like never before. They are one. And so Tertullian was punching that, he was hitting that, he was pushing that home that Jesus and the Father are one. And that's what Jesus wants us to understand tonight. He prays that believers, that's you and I, sisters and brothers, might know that he not only comes from the Father, but he and the Father are also one. I read it again, verse 21, John chapter 17, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me, that you have sent me. Now, some of these, some, let me say it, some of these preachers and some of these leaders and some of all of these apostles and bishops and potentates and, and priests and all these people, I don't know what all these uh, erudite names that they have today, but all of them ain't been sent, sisters and brothers. All of them ain't been sent. Jesus is clear. I, I am <laughs> sent by the Father, and the Father and me are one. Believing that God sent Jesus is critical to our faith and is also critical to our belief system as well. We, have, we believe that God sent his only begotten son to the world. We believe that. So Jesus understood uh, that the church would take off and the church would fully grow after his resurrection. But he wanted to make sure now in this prayer, in this prayer, he wanted to make sure that the people of God, the believers didn't have more faith in the church, if would, than they had in the one that created the church. Are y'all hearing me tonight? He, he, he wanted to make sure that we believe in the son of God. That's his emphasis, that we believe in the son of God. And so he didn't want us to have more faith in the church uh, than we had in God Almighty. And here's the reality. Here's his real concern. Uh, we don't put our faith in sinners. I think that's the best way I can put it. Um, 
We don't put our faith in other believers. You, you, you don't put faith in people, in individuals, sisters and brothers. You put faith in God. You put faith in Jesus Christ because people on their best day will let you down. And if that is who you're putting your faith in, then your faith is going to be sort of on a roller coaster. If what you, you're going to be tops and turf, you're going to be up and down all around. You put your faith in people. No, you put your faith in God. I always tell people when they say, I got faith in my football team. No, I don't. I ain't got no faith in them. They, they get paid to be out there. I'm, my faith is in God. Now, do you want me to say, I have confidence in my team. I'm pulling for my team. I'm cheering for my team. Y'all know I cheer for my team. Y'all know I love my team. Y'all know I push them on. Yeah, but I ain't got no faith in them. My faith is in God. My faith is in Jesus Christ. Uh, so I don't have the kind of faith that I put in temporary stuff. No, I put my faith in things that are eternal and I hold to God's unchanging hand. And so what Jesus' message is tonight, I need them to believe in me more than they believe in individuals, in personalities, in people. I need them to believe in me. And so uh, that's his message tonight. I am the one responsible for the church. So ultimately your belief should be in me, your Lord and savior more than it is in an individual. See, for me, Jesus' prayer is more so about believers never losing sight of the one who's able to keep you from falling. This, that's what that prayer is to me. Let me say it again. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That's, 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 that's it for me right there, child of God, in verse number 20. Uh, this prayer for me is about me believing in the one that's able to keep me from falling. The one that will one day present me faultless before his presence. The only wise God, our father, be glory and majesty, dominion and power henceforth and forevermore. Amen. That's who my faith is. I am believing in Jesus Christ. And it is so central for him. It is so critical for him that he is saying tonight, I'm praying that you believe in me. I'm praying that your belief system wraps itself around the savior of the world. And, and if you're looking for scripture, that's Jude 24 and 25, now unto him that's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless. That's, that's in the epistle of Jude. In other words, Jesus is praying tonight that you believe in him before you believe in your pastor. I'm coming with my big head close to the screen so you can see me. Believe in him before you believe in the pastor. See, sisters and brothers, or before you believe in a church leader. Let me tell you something about pastors and about church leaders and about church members. One thing we have all in common, we gonna get up out of here. I don't care how much you believe in them. They, we got to go. This is this is this is our temporary abode. This is not our permanent place. And I think the church. This is just slaughter talking tonight. Y'all bear with me. I think the church has missed the mark on this. The church has become so personality driven that people are placing more confidence in the pastor and the leader than they are in God. I'm going to let that sit for a minute. Some people are placing more confidence in the pastor than they're placing in God. Some people fall apart, not this church, but some churches, if they can't get their pastor. So what? My belief is in God. The pastor is not mentioned as the one that's able to keep me from falling. No, not unto him that's able to keep me from falling. I hope y'all are hearing me tonight. Now, it's admirable for you to love your pastor, love your leader, support your pastor, encourage your pastor. But listen tonight, don't worship your pastor. I don't care what church you go to. Don't worship your pastor. Your pastor is nothing but a man or woman. They are not able to keep you from falling. They're not able to present you faultless. They're not able to preach you. I know you got people already tagged who's going to preach your funeral, who's going to preach your eulogy as if their words are going to get you in heaven. No, it's your life 
that gets you a seat in the kingdom, not them as an individual, sisters and brothers. Now, yes, the Bible talks about reverencing and, and revering and loving your leaders that God has placed over you and honoring those that teach the word of God to you and supporting those. But the word of God never says worship them. Some people have gotten to the point that they're worshiping the pastor. I mean, it's it's something to behold, sisters and brothers. They are worshiping the pastor. No, 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 no. That's only for God in Jesus Christ. Those are the only two that you ought to be worshiping, which means if the pastor leaves, your life ought not fall apart. If the pastor goes somewhere else, your life ought not fall apart. I'm telling you, I love y'all. Y'all know I love you. You know I do. And many of you, you love me with the same love that I have for you. But sisters and brothers, the reality is in 20 years, I'm gone. That's 65. I'm, I'm not checking out of here to eternity. That's not my prayer. I'm not asking for that. But what I mean by I'm gone, I'm fading off. I'm, I'm getting out the way. And so the work of ministry should not end when the pastor is gone. But the work of ministry continues to go because our belief is in Jesus Christ. He's praying for that tonight. Lord, he's saying, God, let them believe in me. I'm praying that they believe in me because if they believe in me, he's saying tonight, I'm not going to let them down. They might be shaken, but I'm not going to let them fall apart. Talk slaughter. He says, believe in him. And that's my message tonight. If Jesus thought enough of us to pray that we believe in him, sisters and brothers, I mean, what more can Jesus say to us tonight than what he's saying about believing in him? Believe in the one who is the source of your strength, the one that is the source of your power, the one that is the source of your might. Believe in him. Listen, you, you may can't believe uh, uh, in a modern day leader, but you can always believe and count on Jesus Christ. Uh, that's the point he's making tonight. You can always count on Jesus Christ. And that's the message I'm trying to give you all tonight. Uh, believe in him. That He praying for that. Listen at him again. He says, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me. Believe in me. I wish y'all could underline that, highlight that in your Bible in verse 20 when he says, believe in me, not believe in the church. Not believe in the AME church, not believe in the United Methodist Church, not believe in the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, not believe in the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, not believe in the Catholic Church, but believe in me, he says in this text. Believe in me, though through their message that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Listen at him, y'all. He's at the point of departure. I cannot hit this enough or press this enough. He has so much other stuff to be thinking about. And this man, at the end of his journey, he's at the point of departure. And he's saying to God, Lord, I need them to believe that you sent me, that I'm not some kind of fairy tale. I'm not some kind of uh, 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 something in their imagination. No, you sent me. You intentionally put me in Mary's womb. You intentionally allowed Joseph to be my earthly father. You intentionally allowed me to come and open blinded eyes and feed the 5,000. You intentionally did all of those things. I need them to believe that you sent me. That's his prayer tonight. That's his prayer, that you believe that Jesus was sent by his father and his father sent his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. That's his prayer tonight. That's, that's the first thing I want you all to get. If you don't get anything else, Jesus prays that believers will believe in him. But he also has another portion of the prayer that I like. Uh, that stresses the importance of prayer. He now prays that believers display God's love. He prays that believers display God's love. He says, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are. Talking about his father. I in them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world 
will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Mm -hmm. Then the world will know that you have loved me. I love that. I love the way he puts that, sisters and brothers, uh, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. How will the world know? By our displaying of God's love. That's how they'll know. And they will know that we are Christians by our love. That's the old hymn of the church. And they will know. <laughs> yes, Lord. That we are Christians by our love. I had a member tell me today uh, that when she write a book, uh, she's going to mention me in her book and going to use the points from my sermon this past Sunday uh, in her book uh, when she writes her book. And, and when one of the points that I talked about uh, is, is what are you doing for others, sisters and brothers? That's when I talked about the first point last Sunday, when I talked about your passion, investing time and energy and those things that you are passionate about. And I talked about King saying the greatest thing is service. And what we do for others, that's the greatest question that we still ask today. What are you doing for others? And so this message and this prayer is about love. And love is evident by what you are doing for others. And I've been saying it, and I'm going to say it again tonight. If the only thing you're doing is for your immediate family, you are missing the mark. It is not simply about your immediate family. It's about what you are doing for others. Your immediate family is your responsibility. <laughs> They are not like your friends. You know, you pick your friends. You don't get to pick your family. You're just born into it and you got to deal with it. That's, that's simply it. And I know some of you don't like the family that you're born in. And some people don't like that you were born into it. That's why I told you about introspection this morning. When you start having an introspective moment, you start being so high and stuck on yourself and so arrogant about yourself. You thinking, oh, you don't want to be around folks. Some folks don't like you. They don't want to be around you. You you just is riding in stink as you think somebody else is riding in stink. And so Jesus said to us this morning, yeah, I'm talking again about this morning, Matthew chapter seven, how you going to get the plank out of somebody else's eye when you got one in your own eye? You have a moment of introspection, sisters and brothers. And then when you have a moment of introspection, you will find out uh, why you so mean, why you so moody, why you so rude, why you so nasty, why you so low down. When you have an introspection moment, you'll find out it really ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. This is all me. It's, it's me. I'm rotten to the core. I need to get myself together, get myself cleaned up, and then it'll change my mood. It'll change my attitude and all that stuff. So I'm not going to deal with what I taught y'all this morning. You should have been on the line. If you missed it, you just done missed it. And don't be like my cousin Felicia. I don't even know if she on here. She misses the daggone thing, and she has the nerve to call me while I'm in the church office yesterday because we in there on Tuesday and Thursday. Come on. I called the devotion line 11 o'clock Monday night and it was gone. I couldn't hear the devotion. Where did it go? Um, I needed that. Can you give it to me? I said, no, can't give it to you. I ain't got it. I'm in my office. I don't bring my book to the office. And this morning when I got ready to have an introspective moment, I went ahead and sent her pictures of it. You know, I had an introspective moment. You don't be like that. You be nice, be sweet. And so I sent a picture of it. Then I went on and started teaching about having your own introspective moment. So I was still nice to her. So Jesus said, display love. <laughs> so you got to display God's love. To love The love that Jesus has shown us, he expects us to demonstrate that same love to others. He expects us to demonstrate. How are you? demonstrating that love to others. And I'm going to come and ask about five of you all. Uh, that's the question tonight. How are you? Matter of fact, let me go find the question on my notes. Uh, the question that I'm going to ask tonight uh, for some of you is how are you demonstrating God's love? That, that's, that's what I'm going to ask tonight. I'm going to ask that question tonight. And so if you want to be one of the ones to answer that, go ahead and put it in the chat and, and raise your hand and Melissa or Nicole or somebody will jot your name down and they'll let me know. Now the glory... Ooh, I like this part. Uh, that's verse 22. And we're going to talk about the glory a little bit more tonight uh, in this prayer because you're going to mention glory a couple of times. Now, the glory that Jesus refers to in this text in verse 22 is in reference to the cross. This is glory that has not happened yet. Uh, and really, he talks about it in the 17th chapter of John right here in the first five verses. Y'all write that down. I want you to read that later. Let me give you a little bit of it. It's just 728. He says, after Jesus said this, 
he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now, this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. He's talking about his daddy. And he says, and now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Now, that's, I really ain't got time to play with this thing. Uh, the glory before the world began. Uh, that's when these theologians and these church historians start pricking your mind in these seminary rooms and they make you want to pull your hair out and they go back and they sit Jesus in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. And when God said, let there be light, let us make man. And they say, why is God talking in that plurality? Why is he having plurality conversation? Ain't nobody there. Who is he talking to? He's the only one there. He has not created Adam and Eve. And so those theologians like Riggins Earl would make me pull my hair out and, 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 and Randall Bailey and, and Harold B. Bennett, all these PhDs would make you pull your hair out because they would place Jesus at the beginning of the world. And they say that although he had not come through an earthly form, in the form of spirit, he was already with God. See, but this ain't seminary, and I don't want to mess none of y'all theology up tonight and, and take y'all all the way back to that God and take y'all all the way back to the beginning. But he had to be talking to somebody. He said, let us make man. Who is us? That's plurality. Who is us? And that's when Randall Bailey said, that's Jesus. And then Jesus says, listen at him, tell he's spilling all the beans. That's why I know him and God, her skin are darkened by Mother Nature's son. There's some uh, a Negro ethnicity in them because they can't keep it to themselves. And he says in verse 5 of John chapter 17, he says, and now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. He's talking about this glory thing. I, I like this whole conversation about the glory. Now, that the glory has been given, uh, it is not Jesus' expectation that we will keep the glory, I'm going to explain that in a minute too, to ourselves. Uh, he, he's not expecting us to keep the glory all to ourselves. The purpose of the glory is to once again unify the people of God and not to divide the people of God. Listen to what one scholar said. Y'all listen to this. One scholar noted, and, and I quote, um, the marvelous message is that God sent Jesus on an important mission to the world and that he not only loved his beloved son, but that he also loved the trained of disciples who are fulfilling that continuing mission to the world, end quote. He not only loved Jesus, but he loved all the disciples and all of those that are continuing the mission of God. It's the last sentence that does it for me. That God also loved the disciples. He loved believers who are fulfilling and continuing the mission of love throughout the world. Jesus is praying tonight that the love of God, he's praying that the love God has exhibited in giving his only begotten son, we all know it, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to save us. He is now praying that we don't sit on it, but that we continually display that love to others. And as we display that love to others, not only to ourselves, but to other believers, then they will know that God not only sent him, but they will know what the love of God feels like. Some people will never hear a sermon. They only see you. And you will become the only sermon that they ever hear. So as you put all that weight on the pastor and somebody, the pastor got to do this and that, what are you doing? That's why Jesus said, let your little light shine. That men and women will see your good works and glorify your father, not let slaughter, let his little light shine. No, let your little light shine so that men and women will see your good work. What are your good works? How are you displaying the love of God? I don't see any hands raised yet. So let me go over here 
and see if any people uh, uh, want to volunteer. Anybody want to volunteer? Do y'all have anything, Melissa? Anybody want to volunteer? Do y'all see anything? Anybody want to volunteer tonight to tell us how are you demonstrating God's love today? In the I got comments, a uh, Doc McIntosh. Calling the sick and shut in, volunteer as a chaplain for American Red Cross. Amen. That's her way of demonstrating God's love. I also have a, another private message saying, praying for others, giving food and monetary donations for feeding and clothing programs, paying tolls for people behind me on the parkway uh, for people that I do not know. Amen. Amen. Uh, another person, Tina Bolden, since she put it public, says volunteering, volunteering at a food bank. That's the way that she's demonstrating love. Uh, anybody else? Now, raise your hand if you want to come on live. We'll bring you on live. All right, Linda Rutherford has her hand raised. Can you unmute her? Can somebody unmute Linda Rutherford? Find her and unmute her. I got her. I'm doing it. Okay. All right, Sister Rutherford, you should be able to unmute yourself. Okay. My, my biggest way to sh show my love, you know how we say time is valuable time is one of the most valuable things we have mm -hmm. that's one of my ways because when i give my time just that ear just to listen mm -hmm. i will listen showing giving time and patience mm -hmm. that's my key my way of showing when giving i give time that time. and patience yeah. mm -hmm. and that you do do all every time i have to text you and ask you have i done this word <laughs> <laughs> the night before I have to do the devotion and you patiently go through your book and find all 300 or 200 some words out I'm done yep. and takes me back on time quickly. Nope, you have not done that. Or no, yeah, Pastor, you've done that. Find another one. Then I <laughs> another word. And then yes. I find another word and I text you back. And you say, okay, check mark. There it go. Let's run that one. Yep. So thank you. You're absolutely right. God bless you. Anybody else? I see Faith Egger said, Random acts of kindness, no special occasion is needed. All right, that's the way she demonstrates God's love. All right, Brother Winkler say amen to Sister Rutherford. This is my way of showing love also. And God knows that Brother Winkler does it as an attorney because he can really be charging for every daggone hour because with an attorney, the meter is ticking the minute you sit down and open your mouth. The clock is ticking and the meter is running, but he gives up his time for a lot of church matters and a lot of things, even for his pastor. That's absolutely right. Anybody else? We got time for one more, then I got to move on. Anybody else? All right. No hands are raised. All right. We're moving on. But you can share it in the chat. You can share it. The chat is testimony. The chat is testimony. That's the testimony section. So you can share it over there. You can share it over there. All right. All right. So, but here's another way. I want to cover you all in case you couldn't come up with nothing right quick. Let, let, me, let me show you. If, if you are a tither and you are a giver and you give to God through St. James, I make sure that you are displaying God's love. One of the ways, I'm, in many ways that we make sure, the many people that we help, but also one of the ways we make sure, even in this pandemic, uh, you're here tomorrow in the State of the Church address on tomorrow night, uh, we served the whole Newark Sanitation Department, all the garbage workers, just went down there and shared love and, 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 and fed all of them and gave them drinks, desserts, everything that they can think of. That's because you gave. Hospital workers that are on the front line, we went and served them. The food bank, uh, Community Food Bank of New Jersey, went and served them. Our social service made sure they had food to eat and all those things. We did all that. That's a way of sharing love, sisters and brothers. We're before us college in South Africa right now. There's a check going because of your contributions on Sunday, all the way over there to South Africa. Somebody at a community college in South Africa will be able to get an education because you gave your tithes and your offerings to the support of the ministry of God. That's another way of you showing God's love. And some of y'all be trying to figure out where this blessing come from, where that blessing come from. You don't even know because of your gifts on Sunday morning or whenever you give it, the people that it goes to help, it boomerangs and come back to you. And you trying to figure out how in the world God blessed me with that. Oh, I didn't have but $100, but I gave it and I gave it. And then the church went and blessed somebody else. That's how it comes back on you, sisters and brothers. So even if you're a giver tonight, 
I tell you tonight, you are displaying God's love because it is going to help a multitude of individuals. And I say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. So Jesus prays tonight that we display God's love. And so many of you all have written in the comment. Uh, there's another one that says working in a hospital, talking to patients, giving words of encouragement and uplifting an individual spirit. They say that's their way of sharing God's love. Another person says daily devotions to keep others encouraged. God loves a cheerful giver. Yes, those are ways that we can display God's love. Amen. So let us continue tonight. It's coming on 740. Uh, what else does he pray about tonight? The importance of prayer. Jesus also prays tonight that, a, uh, that believers will experience his glory. That believers will experience his glory. Listen at it. I'll read it tonight. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory. The glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Mm, mm, mm. Do y'all see that? Y'all see that? Do y'all hear his words tonight? I want them to I, I want them to be where I am. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory. I want you to see my glory. Oh, Lord, I want you to see my glory. The glory you have given me because you've loved me before the creation of the world. Jesus prays that the believers will experience his glory. Although Jesus is departing, it doesn't mean that those that come to know him after his departure won't be able to experience him. All of us in here tonight, we know Jesus after his departure. And we are evidence mm, that we can experience the glory of Jesus even after he has departed this world. Glory, what is that? That is the singular splendor of God. The singular splendor of God. Glory, the attribute of God or the manifestation of God. The attribute of God or the man manifestation of God. Glory, sisters and brothers. Jesus does not want any of those opportunities to end as a result of his departure. He wants us to experience his glory. God's glory it's also about fellowship and relationship. Let me say that again. Fellowship and relationship. Listen at his specific request that confirms this in verse 24. Father, I want those you have given me relationship to be where I am. Fellowship. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, there it is right there. I want those you have given me. That's relationship. You've given them to me. They, they, I'm in relationship with them. I, I, I love me some of them. Yeah, uh, that's relationship. But he says, I also want to be in fellowship. So where I am, I want them to be right here with me. So I, I want relationship and I want fellowship. Sisters and brothers, uh, that should be all of our objective and aim tonight. And that is to be wherever Jesus is. Yep, to be wherever Jesus is. Oh, we get those wonderful big words talking about he's omnipotent. He's powerful. He's omniscient. Oh, he knows everything. But he's also omnipresent. He's everywhere. And so our aim, sisters and brothers, if we really want the glory, our aim should be to be wherever Jesus is. Uh, in fact, uh, one commentary uh, noted this. Listen, here, here it is, and I quote, the communion and fellowship which disciples have with Jesus in this life will increase in eternity. The goal of a believer's salvation is future glorification, which includes being 
with Jesus, end quote. That's good there. That's good. I, I shouldn't even have to say any more. Uh, but let me say more. Um, why you think Tasha Cobbs wrote For Your Glory? She said, For Your Glory, I will do what? Anything. I wish I had a quiet night. Y'all, y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm looking at your faces on the Zoom. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. What is Tasha Cobb trying to tell y'all? What is she telling us? We can be where he is wherever we are, even in our homes right now. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. Some of us think the only time we can be where Jesus is is when we get to heaven. The devil is a liar. You can be where Jesus is right now, where you are, sisters and brothers. He will come among you. He will come and sit with you. And that's it for your glory, I will do anything. See, most folk want glory so that we can be empowered and do our own thing. No, that ain't what the glory is for. The glory is about relationship and fellowship, child of God. It is the splendor of God. It is the manifestation of God. It is when the presence of God in you, it's when the presence of God comes upon you and the presence of God can come upon you right there in your house. And that's why here comes Dr. Cecilia Bryant from a few weeks ago, the altar within you the altar inside of you. You can carve out space right there and experience the glory of Almighty God even in that place, even in that particular place. And sisters and brothers, your goal in life should be to be wherever Jesus is. And tonight, for Tasha Cobb's song, song, the theological import is right there in verse 24. That's it. That's what Jesus is praying about. Jesus is praying that we experience him. He wants us to experience him. He wants to be with us and he wants us to be in his presence, sisters and brothers. That's it right there. For your glory, I will do anything. Jesus prays that believers will experience his glory. Um, um, I, I, let me tell you this. Um, after the day, let me get a drink of water on this one now. And I see Reverend Garvey is on here tonight. Uh, after Reverend Garvey called me, I was going to take my COVID test. Uh, the day I was down there in Trenton, uh, going to take my COVID test uh, to make sure I'm COVID free. I have to take it every single week. And I'm going in to take my COVID test. I come out, Reverend Garvey called me. We had been talking about some other stuff when I was in my state office. And um, I thought he was calling to follow back up with that. And uh, I went to talking. Uh, without knowing he had somebody else on the line. And I went to talking. I said, listen, man, I just talked to the VP of PSENG. We got the hookup. We going to get the line turned off out there. And he said, hold it, Rev, hold it, hold it. Don't say nothing else. We got somebody else on the line. I was giving up all the good stuff. And he said, hold it a minute. <laughs> and then he brought me the news. He said, I, I, I have uh, some, some not so good news, Pastor. Um, I got the owner of Tank Solutions on the line. I said, oh, Lord, what done happened? And he said, well, uh, they took the tanks out. And uh, both of the tanks are leaking, Pastor. That means uh, it's now an environmental issue now. Um, and there's some things that gotta be done uh, before we can move forward to clear this thing up. Um, and he said, but I'm gonna let the gentleman explain. And the gentleman went to explain that they removed, extracted both of the tanks, got them out um, and, and, and inspected the tanks and had the inspectors on site. Uh, because when you, um, when you're dealing with the DEP, the Department of Environmental Protection, you know, they come and they inspect all this stuff. And so they inspecting it. They said, no, this leak is in here. Uh, really wasn't no oil in there. Whatever oil it is, we, we already concluded it's 20, 30, 50 year oil. So <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't know what the oil is or whatnot. So, but they got to test the soil. They got to remove the soil. They got to come and backdrop and put all the backfill it and all this kind of stuff. And I knew when he started talking all them highfalutin terms and stuff in terms of construction, I knew where that was going because the more he talked, the more the dollar signs kept going through my head. Ching, 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 ching. I said, oh boy, them things going up real quick. It's going up real quick. And by the time he got done, he said, I know it's a lot, Pastor, and I, I won't do this to no church. And I'm giving you the best cut I can give you. 
uh, in order to get this thing rectified. But but it, on, on top of the 8,000 y'all owe me, it's going to be another 20 uh, in order to get all this dealt with because I got to get the inspectors in here. We got to inspect the soil. I got to haul this stuff out. I got to bring stuff back in. I got to get the tanks out of here. And then I got to bring this stuff back in. And and, and it, it, it's a nightmare. But but we're going to get through it. And um, I, I, I came out taking my test. I got in the car, that little Ford Fusion state car that I have to drive every day that they give me, that little Ford Fusion, little small little car, I'd be zooming up and down the road. Let me tell y'all, man, I was zooming down the road on Monday, down the turnpike, uh, talking to Marvin Zanders, and forgot what the speed limit was. I mean, I was in the cars lane going south. Man, I had that little Ford Fusion at 95 miles per hour. I was getting it, boy. And over there in the DOT yard, Department of Transportation yard, I saw that little Dodge Charger over there, uh, which is state police. I saw him hit them lights, uh, to turn his uh, headlights on. I said, oh, Lord, here he comes. Lord, here he comes. I said, Marvin, stay on the phone. Stay on the phone, Xanders. I said, because he, he over there in the truck lane, but he coming on over here. And as soon as there's a break in the meeting, he going to jump over. And so he was coming over, and I started coming on over with him because I knew he was coming to get me. And so while he was coming to the far left, I was coming to the far right. Next thing we know, we're looking at each other. He's waiting on the open to cut on cross. He cuts across. By the time he cuts across, I done pulled on over. He comes up. Um, he runs the tag, and I'm, I'm sitting there like, this is going to be interesting today. It's going to be a very interesting day. So I'm sitting there, and he comes up the car. He got his face mask on. He looks in. He says, sir, this is a state of New Jersey vehicle. You work for the state of New Jersey? I say, yes, sir, I do. He said, just slow down and have a nice day. I say, thank you, Jesus. Bye, officer. Have a nice day, too. God bless you, man. And got on back out there on the road. So I was coming down the road today. I said, I ain't going to get in trouble today because you don't want to take man's kindness for weakness, you know. So I'm cruising down. And I just start in my notes, these notes that I use, I handwrite everything. You know, this is written on Tuesday. And uh, I started singing Tasha Cobb's song, For Your Glory. I would do anything. I couldn't wait to Sunday. I couldn't wait to Wednesday night. After hearing all that, that that man uh, done talked about with them numbers, I needed to be wherever Jesus was. And can I tell you all, by the time I got from Trinidad back to my house and got in here, I was satisfied and content that the Lord had already worked this thing out already in advance. And that's what I mean tonight when it talks about for your glory, I would do anything. Sometimes you have to pause in the middle of your day to get in the presence of God, wherever Jesus is. And we talk about, behold, I stand at the door and knock and if man let me come in, I'll come in and I'll sit with him. Sometimes you got to tell Jesus, come now, Lord, come. Hey, here's the old folk down south. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. And I start telling them today, somebody needs you, Lord, because I'm about to go crazy over this daggone building project. If you don't hurry up and tear this thing down, I'm going to go and blow it up and build something my daggone self. So come by here, Lord. And by the time I got through saying, come by here, Lord, somebody needs you, Lord. Somebody been praying, Lord. Come by here. Don't y'all know I was soothed and calm. And by the time I got home, I was convinced that the Lord had been in that automobile with me. So don't y'all talk about you can't touch him unless you're in the church. The devil is a liar. I felt him in that Ford Fusion coming down that turnpike to the parkway to 280. I felt him in the vehicle. So if you can't feel him, shame on you. But he says right now, God, he says in the text, I am praying that they will experience my glory. You cannot wait to Sunday morning to get the glory. You got to learn how to get the glory during the week. You got to learn how to get the glory in the morning and say, Lord, I need your glory. Lord, I need your glory. Lord, I need your glory. And the reason some of y'all can't never shout is because you don't feel the glory unless somebody pushing you and somebody progging you. But sometimes you feel the glory when you're all by yourself. My mom used to fold her arm and shake herself. They used to just start crying and tears running down her eyes. That was the glory of God right there in the living room. And so I'm telling you tonight, he's praying that you experience his glory. He wants you to experience his glory. You ought to want to feel his glory, sisters and brothers. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Uh, uh, here's the last one. I'm out of here. But Jesus prays that believers will experience God's love. Now, that's the difference. First time I told you about displaying God's love, but now 
he prays that we will experience God's love. Verse 25, righteous father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Boy, if I was in the church, I, I, there, there's a shout. Oh boy, I need, where's Anthony Chain when I need him? There's a shout right there. There is a shout in you. <laughs> we talked about this last week. In you. They, 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 they done brought Anthony Chain up. It's just a chain. Look at that. <laughs> in you. Look what he said that you might experience in you his love and in you Jesus Christ. Not only does Jesus want us to display love, but he also wants us to experience God's love. Jesus earnest requests that the love that God has for him is also experienced by us. He prays that that love be on the inside of us. He says, in us. He wants us to experience inside of us. Look, look, there it is. In us. He says, in them. Inside. Stop giving people access to what's inside of you. It's not meant for everybody. Everybody should not have access to what's on the inside of you. Spirit of the disciples was to be that of love. Not the love of which the world speaks, but the kind of love that God had for his only begotten son. That's the kind of love Jesus wants in us. We experience God's love in so many ways and so many forms. And we oftentimes and most times experience it inside of ourselves. While we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. That's love. A man that laid down his life for a friend. That's love. And he wants us to experience that love inside. Once again, I declare it again. I have made you known, verse 26, to them, and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Jesus wants to live in us. And he also wants his love to be in us. I'm done, but I'm going to say it like the old folk used to tell me. After a while, what's in you is going to come out of you. Whatever is in you is going to come out. Some of y'all say it like this. I'm just one of those persons. Whatever come up, come out. Well, when it come out, that gives us an indication what's in you. And sometimes a whole lot of something else is in us. And it comes out of us. But Jesus says, I want my love to be in you because I want to be in you. Isn't that amazing that he prays that kind of prayer at the end of his life? He, he prays that we believe in him. He prays that we display God's love. He prays that we experience his glory. And he prays that we experience his father's love. And each and every one of us have experienced our father's love. Amen. Amen. I'm done. Questions tonight. Um, Melissa and Nicole, if, if I miss anything in the chat or anything uh, on social media, I think I saw it one time we got up to 112 on Facebook. Any questions tonight? 
I even see Reverend Orsella on here tonight, all the way from Connecticut. Yeah, God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. All right, any questions, sisters and brothers? Any questions? Any questions tonight? Any questions? Thank you. I'm reading the comments. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. I haven't heard from Alyssa Nicole or Dorian. That means I don't have any. Now, sisters and brothers, don't forget, tomorrow night is our state of the church. Uh, that's when I give you the state of our church, how we're doing and, and what we're trying to do. Um, I'll try to answer questions, but uh, we're going to be on strict protocol, uh, strict, strict, strict protocol tomorrow night now. Everybody going to be mute. You won't even have the power to unmute yourself tomorrow night uh, unless we ask you to unmute uh, so that I can get through all of the address and get through the budget and get through the recapitulation of 2020 and all of that stuff financially and show you all of that. We're only doing it on Zoom. It won't be on anything else but Zoom, only on Zoom because we can control Zoom. We cannot control. We cannot control Facebook. We cannot control uh, the website and all that who view, and uh, we want we want everybody to be on Zoom. So if you don't have the link, uh, uh, you need to contact the church office tomorrow, and I'll be there as well tomorrow. Uh, contact the church office or email, or you can even drop your email address tonight, and they'll try to catch it in the chat section. If you don't receive the e-blast, then you you won't have it because it's going to be sent out tomorrow via e-blast and it was sent out on tuesday i think e-blast it was in tuesday's e-blast and one will go out tomorrow with the zoom link for the state of the church address so please call the church office or drop your email i see uh bradley vernell is dropping his email uh tonight and so melissa will try to capture all of that tonight all right, it's just eight o'clock. I'm gonna get ready and give the shout outs. Angela Burgos has put her email. Uh, so sisters and brothers, I don't, we, we the officers and members of this church don't have nothing to hide, uh, but we ain't doing it on no Facebook and doing it on no uh, daggone website. So y'all come on on here, you can see all you want. And if you got questions and answers tomorrow night, you put them in the chat or you use the raise the hand icon and somebody will acknowledge you. And then we'll try to answer all your questions. Uh, the church should not be a secret, even in virtual world, even in the midst of the pandemic, people ought to know what's going on at their church and what they church and what their church is doing. And I've been doing it for 10 years now, and I'm not going to stop now. I'm not going to stop now. Not going to stop now. Amen. Amen. Life too short. I'm trying to see Jesus uh, one day and it ain't enough money to steal. So it ain't no use to even, even acting like you're going to steal none of that. That ain't enough. I'm I tried to hit that mega million. I know y'all gonna look at your pastor funny, but I tried to get that big old million. I would have retired at 45. I'd have been done. Y'all, I would, and but I'd have built the church for y'all and I'd, I'd have paid everything off. I'd have built it for you and did everything. But I would have been on the island somewhere after um, I paid y'all enough money to build it and would have gave enough money to the seniors to, to pay some of their stuff off. And then I would have rolled off in the sunset if I'd have hit that mega million, whatever that thing called with that Powerball. Boy, if I could have got that sucker, <laughs> man, what you talking about? Man, what you talking about? Jesus, keep me near the cross. Now, this thing is trying to, I don't want to add no Adobe tonight. Look at them trying to mess me up. Get out of here. Get out of here, Satan. I don't want to deal with that tonight. All right. Uh, I see. Hey, Sister Shaw, God bless you. All right. All right. All right. Shout out time. Let me go. Let me go to the end and then I work my way up to the front. All right. All right. I don't know who this Galaxy A20, but hey, Brianna S., Michelle Millette, Olivia Artis, Susan Shaw, Wanda Henderson, um, Melinda Mason, Bernice's iPhone, Sister Gwen Garrison, Brother James Clark, Sherry, Tucker, Kyla. Oh, that's my wife. Hey, baby. All right. Sandra Kitson, Katina uh, Thomas, Lula Hargrove. E.C. Jones, Anissa Victor, Kyle Smith. Thank Kyle for taking the pictures tonight of um, them removing the tanks. All right. Farrell Slaughter, hey, Pooty Woody. All right. Sidney Sneed, uh, Reverend Marlowe, Tammy Powell, Gail Graves, I believe that's who that is. Brother Craig Epps, Mama Sarah Slaughter, 
somebody's iPhone. Hey, Angela Burgos. All right, Brother Monroe Johnson, Sister Vesta, Brother Vernell. All right. All right. Sister Lynette, General Attorney Winkler. Hey, Brother Winkler. All right, Linda Williams. Good to see you. Erica Rose, Sheila Graham. All right, Dana Carter, I like you reading something. Nicole Smith, Ace of the Laurie, Ace of Joanne, Ace of the Vivian Carter, Ace of the Paula. All right, Sister Cheryl Thomas, Brother Carl Mickens over there with that Adidas sweatsuit, sitting back in that chair, man, like you got a million dollars. Hey, Carl Mickens. <laughs> All right, uh, Sister Tina Bolden, Reverend Dr. Mary, Sister Paula King, Sister Linda Moore. Evangelist McIntosh, hey, Sister Teresa, hey, Sister Horton, hey, Sister Burgess, hey, uh, Mama Sneed and Brother Sneed, good to see y'all, Brother Chain and Sister Chain, all right, Sister Sherry, Sister Faith, Brother Carl Peterman, Papa Ike and Mama Grave, hey, Mama Grace, hey, all right, Sister Jackie Evans, hey, Reverend Garvey and Sister Ince, God bless you all, hey, Sister Wimbush, Sister Valerie, all right, Sister Donna Maddox, Sister Linda Rutherford, and Miss Dolly Sherrod. Hey, Miss Dolly, we got boot camp on February the 6th. That's right, we got boot camp on February the 6th. Boot camp February the 6th. Man, we got a whole lot going on. I'm, I know since the board waiting on me to get to the class leaders. Listen, let me tell y'all this, and I know we're getting off. Um, here's my life. <laughs> Monday, prayer and devotion. And whatever board meeting, it could be Marion P. Thomas Charter School. It can be like the day New Brunswick Theological Seminary. It can be like next week, Wesley Theological Seminary. Or it can be Turner or it can be St. Michael's. And then on Tuesday, I'm in the church office. Then on Wednesday, I'm doing devotion and then Bible study at night. Then on Thursday, I'm in that church office tomorrow. Then on Friday, I'm doing prayer and devotion. Saturday, only day, I suppose the rest. Then Sunday, I'm preaching. And that's just a little short synopsis of what my life looked like in COVID. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, breathe. Sunday, right back at it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And that's it all over again. Like today, I was on a Zoom with New Brunswick, uh, dealing with church stuff, and then teaching Bible study and did prayer and devotion this morning. That, that's what my life looked like. So um, I'm loving it, but I'm, I'm I'm getting older, so I have to slow down just a little bit. All right. All right, Sister Bembry, I see you on Facebook. God bless you. All right, Sister Betty Smithson, Sister Tony Bird, Sister Missy Campbell, Sister Simone Lashley, Sister Sharon McCormick, Brother Stephen Sims. All right. I see you all over there. Sister Joyce Hunt, uh, Sister Thel McCall, Reverend Pam Ringo, uh, Tiana Taylor, all right, Bonnie Black, uh, Donna Gilbert, Siobhan Richardson, Corinne Burwell, Lynn Elijah, uh, Victoria Gandy, Jan Greener, uh, Sharon, I mean, Gloria Lewis, <clears throat> Laverne Hayden, all right, Melissa, some of them are putting their emails over in the chat on um, Facebook. All right, Sister Tracy uh, Cheatham, um, Don Jones, Kimberly Malloy, Joyce Hollinger, Sharon Elijah, uh, Margaret Jackson. All right, good to see all of y'all. Sister Jackie Sim, Sister Amy Brown, Sister Warren, uh, Sister Rosa Askin, Atkins, Sister Kimma uh, Walker. All right, good to see all of you over there. Sister Monica Johnson, good to see everybody that's over there on social media. So many comments, I'm trying to scroll up. Brother Brian Talmadge, uh, Sister Monica Yvette, Sister Stacy Webb, Sister Rashida Warren, uh, Brother Corey Coffey, all right. Sister Stacy Webb, good to see all of you over there. I love you all. Angela Dixon, y'all have a good night. All right, Sister Johnny Cannon, Dorothy Murphy, uh, Carolyn Wood, God bless all of you all. God bless you all. All right, Sister Redding, Sister Hewitt, Reverend Michael Adi, yes, yes, Sister Verdell Williams. Everybody over there on social media, love y'all over there. Love y'all. Love y'all. All right. May the Lord bless y'all tonight. And may the Lord keep you tonight. And may the Lord certainly allow his face to shine upon you. God be with you tonight until we meet again. Love y'all. Have a good night. Let's unmute everybody. Let's unmute everybody. We only have 49. Most people are gone. Good night.
Good night, everybody. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'm looking at this stock. Huh? I was looking at that stock. That's what I looked. Did you see Which that one? today? Uh, GameStop and uh, tonight and that AMC. Oh, oh the AMC. Yeah, we're yes. talking about that in uh, March when we talk about. All stuff. right, yeah, March. we gotta March. get on that. Yeah, we're gonna be on it. That's All right, <laughs> see y'all. Good night, everybody. Good night, watch his night. See y'all tomorrow, so tomorrow night. night. I see y'all tomorrow night. Have a good night. See you tomorrow night. I'm Vesta and oh, okay. Vesta, 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 Vesta is on Dateline. No, no, I don't know why I keep saying Dateline. It's Nightline. Nightline, Nightline on tomorrow. Nightline. Y'all support tonight. Nightline. 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 Social service will be on Nightline. You can get it on Hulu and on demand. I think those are the two places you can get Nightline. Nightline. Okay. All right. All right. Y'all have a good night. Love y'all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'm going to call you in the morning. I'm best to answer my text message. the father you are the everlasting god you are the everlasting god everlasting god yeah. the lord is my light and salvation whom shall i fear whom shall i be afraid the lord my light and salvation whom shall I fear whom shall I be afraid I will wait I will wait I will wait on you I will wait on you